Okay. <laughs> oh, it's stale. What did you think was gonna happen? Anyways, hello, hello. This is Michaela and DP interrupting uh, for Oye Dimolo Cinema Club. This week we are gonna be talking about a girl walks a a uh, girl walks alone home at night. Got through that. Stumbled through that. That's great. I like the Macaulay Culkin one better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming him for ruining the rhythm. So anyways, I'm just going to open the floor to first impressions. Um, yeah, so JP, since he seems so opinionated, why yeah. don't you go? No, I think Chris, Jason, or Steve Dez should go. I'll go. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, what was my first impression? Um, this is like what the third vampire movie that we've seen, and I like. Are you sure this is from the same person that made? Uh, no, it's not. Oh, it's not. Well, okay, make, make, makes sense though. I think this may be like the third Iranian film that we've seen as well, and I think second best to the Iranian film, and perhaps uh, I, I think I like this one. Uh, like, I'm not a fan of horror at all. Um, this one reminds me a lot of um, Let the Right One In, mm. and I like this movie compared to that one, even though Let the Right One In has a has more of a better story, but for me, it's a bit more problematic, right? <laughs> since it's like this old vampire like taking advantage of his kid, but in this one, it's like eh, we don't really know how old this vampire is. And it's some dumb old man. Well, not a man. Well, he's not old, but I don't know what I'm saying. I like the movie. Black and white um, is, does have moments of suspense and horror elements in it. You effing squeed, like, a lot. Um, it's so pretty. Yeah. It's, it's probably one of the most beautiful black and white films I've ever seen. Like, the cinematography of this film was bonkers. There's a lot of shots that I could have sworn I've seen in other movies. Well, but that's part of why it was so beautiful. It's like you yeah. can tell that this is like a love letter to like old, like Hollywood, like that golden age monster movies. Like it's a love letter to it in like yeah. the best flattering way possible. I love this movie. No, I, I, I love this movie. Yeah. It was so good. That was my first impressions, guys. Uh, who wants to take the floor next? Uh, I'll go next then. Uh, I will just come flat out and I'll say it and I'll probably need to be brief because uh, there's a lot to be said, but I don't have to say a lot about this movie. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, you guys probably know this. We've talked about it before, but uh, I think we talked about it before. I'm a big vampire nut. I love vampire. I love vampire movies because vampire, vampires to me are like the best monsters because they have lived in all the time. So you can tell a story from any period, any you know, country, any community, any neighborhood, any anywhere. Like, so their presence can just be anywhere willy-nilly, no problem. You know, you can add any lore you want to it. You know, there's very few rules that you, I mean, there's a few very key rules you have to follow with vampires, but that puzzle can be manipulated in so many ways. And I just, I love the vampire films that have come out like in the last 10 to 12 years, really the stuff that starts coming out like after Twilight, there's been a lot of really good ones. I agree with JP. This movie does remind me. Uh, it did give me some uh, vibes of Let the Right One In. Uh, I've only ever seen the European version of that, Swedish version, I believe. Um, it's a Swedish movie, right? I don't know. It's definitely a hurdy dirty dirty European. That's that's what I know. <laughs> well, it's Nordic to be sure. Um, I, I dug that one. I dug this one. I love... I love uh, Middle Eastern cinema. There's a lot of good stuff out there that's been overlooked. I'm sure there's a lot of bad stuff, but uh, the, the stuff that gets out there, that gets in front of us, I haven't been disappointed in a really long time. Uh, these were fantastic actors. That kid gave me some, the, the, the lead in this film gave me some James Dean vibes a little bit. Like he was like Iranian James Dean. Uh, I love the vampire girl. She gave me some strong uh, Winona Ryder type vibes. Uh, super cute unassuming lady vampire, you know, 
uh, the, the costume design, amazing. Her wearing her uh, her burka or whatever. Holy smokes, it's so cool. It's just it's such a great uh, it's such a great visual for a vampire who's like sort of in disguise. Like it, it's just like unassuming. It's beautiful. It's be cinematography beautiful. Music selection incredible. It's this movie for real is like an Iranian Western rock rock movie. Yeah, I can that's, see that. Uh, that's my first impression. Yeah. Uh, for me, I totally read by accident, like last week when we were picking the movie. Um, for this week, I was like, I'm just going to read the first line of each movie and then make a decision. And when I read it, I was like, ooh. So I voted for the other movie. Um, and then once I started watching it, I was about five minutes in and I was like, this is interesting. And I got to tell you, this is one of the best movies I've seen in a really, really long time. Um, I, I loved it. I loved everything about it. It made me think I'm like, I have so many thoughts about this movie. Um, from everything from like the balloon dance scene to um, the, the skate. Every time I saw a skateboard, I was like, oh, this is a good skateboard scene. And I was like, how many good skateboard scenes are they going to have? Like, it was yeah. just, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, uh, I want to call it Vigilampire, by the way. I think that's what it should be called because I cannot say it think again. Of the, what'd you say? What's the, what's the title? Say the title again. Vigilampire. Because Vigil, I can't. Vigil vampire? <laughs> Vigilampire, like vigilante. Vigilant vampire, gotcha. So <laughs> to me, it was like that the title, every time I was trying to think of what it was called, I could not remember those words in the correct order. Um, right. So that was hard for me. And I was like, that might be a brilliant move because people are like, I think it's called, and then you have a whole conversation just about that when you're talking about this movie. Um, but I feel like there was a lot of things in it where I, the, the, the intensity of the scene at the beginning where she kills the pimp, mm -hmm. it didn't carry the whole time that she had to have any more violent scenes like that. There was intensity without it getting violent again in that same exact, there were a couple scenes where it was violent, but not in the same way. And they didn't have to do that. Her presence was now known. So for me, that was awesome too. They didn't have to go down that road of gore anymore. It was like her intensity was established in that one scene. Um, and I honestly thought the girl prior to her was in the car was gonna be the vampire. Um, so uh, I, I truly, I did not expect to like this movie as much as I did. I think I thought it was amazing. All right, Steve, what did you think? Ah, so what did I think? My first impressions. Uh, I gotta say, first time watching the movie, first time even hearing about this movie. And my first impression was when I played the movie and I saw the sticker of Vice, I was like, this better be good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Wow, what a great piece of cinema. Like, I, I personally believe wholeheartedly if you have a movie that has not just one, but multiple scenes where there's literally zero dialogue and it can still keep you intrigued, you've done a great film. And this movie knocked it out of the park. The cinematography was great. Uh, the acting was amazing. Uh, it did remind me of like old cinema, uh, for sure. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the acting. Uh, I imagine that I didn't do the research. Someone can correct me, but I imagine all the actors that were here were actually authentically Persian, not some white guy playing Persian role. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Maybe unpopular opinion, and maybe I'm jumping ahead of the gun, but you guys been giving praises, you know, to different characters here in the movie. But I'm gonna mention the unsung hero, the person that has not been mentioned throughout this entire film yet. And I gotta say, my favorite character of the film, the cat. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That cat, that cat, that cat is the best actor of all time. <laughs> and and the cat got a single credit. He actually like, was listed twice. Like, he yeah. got two credits. <laughs> it's great. You got two credits? Yeah, yeah. Because like it was the, his technically his debut film, and it was also part of the rolling. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I really did want to talk about like the very like specific cinematography in this um, film, just because I feel like they utilize images so well. Um, so, like, what was the one that really just stuck in your head? Um, I think is where I want to go, and I think that the way that they utilized the scenery in this film was amazing. You know, like the oil pumps, like felt like a character in of a, of themselves throughout this thing. You know, because like there's so much wealth, but the community is so impoverished, and that's like part of what drives what's happening. And it's just like the way that they used the entire landscape was just so smart with just like the imagery. So what did you guys, like what are images thoughts about the cinematography that you guys had? I'll, I'll, I'll say, um, man, it, with for movies like this, I, I get kind of mad that, because uh, we watch our films with uh, our roommate and he has like this ultra high definition television set and this movie, I feel like, would have been a better experience, like in the cinema, because mm -hmm. I know, like, you, when you could see the slight different grays and blacks pixelated onto the screen because it is what it is. Uh, like the closest film that I can think about this one is maybe the Lighthouse, where the Lighthouse, like, when they use so many black shadows, a lot of things look kind of distorted. This one, the shadows kind of acts more like a vignette or a or a, like a border for certain scenes and uh and i don't they know when uh, the, the 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 30 year old uh, uh adult uh, the, the the sex worker mm -hmm. when she does the dance when she does her dance like everything around her suddenly kind of goes to black but she is like has a like a light, a border of light that shines on her dress on her figure and she became she becomes like the focus while in Such this void shot. you know oh. so i really like the use of the shadows where like oddly enough it wasn't menacing i mean at times it was it's, it's a fucking horror movie but they i think more than not it was used to like just like accentuate something or put focus on something. Yeah, no, like it definitely added to like what was going on with the characters. Cause like when you say that, like the way that they use the shadows when you first meet the vampire girl, like there's several times where like she's just out of focus and she, her face literally looks like a skull. Like that's how smart they were with the lighting <laughs> is like they could like put that kind of foreshadowing on an image. Ugh. <laughs> can't, I can't. Such a, such a good thing. So, uh, Jason, what did you think? Like, what's an image or something with the, the cinematography that really just struck? There you? are a lot of fantastic images in this thing. But the one that comes, I mean, and I love the ones that you guys are talking about. The lighting is brilliant throughout. Uh, the, there's a scene at the very end that I like where the lighting, where they're sitting in the car with the cat, and just the lighting in that scene in the car is so great. I know it's one of those things that like might even get overlooked, but mm -hmm. the lighting in that scene, it is flawless. It's so good. Um, but the scene that really stuck out to me was the scene when she invited uh, him to her bedroom. Oh, and they're just- That was mine. <laughs> it, it, we, we'll have to share it because it, it really is that good. It's just, it, it's just a tableau and there's many different tableaus and the, the light in the room adds something and seemingly there's not a lot going on, but there's everything that's going on in this little space and this little moment for them. Like they're having a moment without saying anything. And it's just, it's honestly, it's done so well to like the untrained eye. It might even come off as a little pretentious, but it's, it's fantastic. It's the best thing of the whole movie for me. And also it's totally my aesthetic. Like, I feel like I almost shot that scene in my film. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the, the lighting designer actually put a strobe light in the scene. I was like, it's too much. Get rid of it. And like now watching this, I'm like, oh man, maybe I messed up. Maybe that's, maybe I should have had that going on. 
but it's uh it's fantastic it's such a beautiful scene and that song is so good i sound hounded it and added it to my playlist it's it's marvelous so for me the music too like that the music in that scene the music on the whole movie the, the soundtrack is amazing um I've been listening to it all. I have it on Spotify now. The whole, I've been downloading each of the songs. I really, really like it. Um, but that scene for me is there's a, a part where he's on ecstasy. And and he remember, he was selling drugs. But I yes. believe that in that scene, it was the first time that he had ever done it. Mm-hmm. Like, he was a person who had never done it. I don't, it, like, by the way, his reaction, the way he didn't want to take it from the girl. Um, yes. And then when he got back to that apartment, the way his head was just focused up at the ceiling. And the whole time I was thinking like, the thing about this guy is he's the only person on the planet that could be romantic with her because he just never is sexual in like an overt way with her. And like, yep. he's just always caring. And so, and every single time I was like, oh, if he kisses her right now, even though it'll be like, eh, she's not gonna go for it. And he, every time he didn't let me down. So for me, that was it. The, the lighting in that scene, like I, the, that scene begins with her facing on one side of the screen. Let's put it all the way over here. And you just see her and then you're waiting for him to make it into the screen. There were so many good parts to that scene for me. Um, what about the transition really out of that scene? Movie. The transition out of that scene is equally as brilliant where like I had, uh, we got like a nice uh, subwoofer here and the bass of like his heartbeat. Cause at first I'm like, what is that? And it's like, oh, that's his heart. Like she can hear his blood like flowing inside of him. And then like the transition out of that to that balloon in the sky, which I imagine is like a red balloon. Can't tell in black and white, but it looks mm-hmm. like it. And I'm like, holy smokes, man. Like, the, like they're using nothing and getting a great big effect. I thought the, re- the balloon might've represented something for a minute or two. Oh yeah, without a doubt. That, red balloon or that balloon has a ton of symbolism on it yeah like well, between the two characters yeah because yeah. like he's so fragile compared to her mm-hmm. you know and like she is a predator she is someone that and so like seeing someone like that's so jarring and like powerful like treating this balloon like it's dance partner like that's like the entire nature of their relationship yeah ah, so good <laughs> I mean, really, like, he is a balloon for her. Mm-hmm. He, like, no matter how much she cares about him, he's temporary. I didn't you know? even think about that aspect. And she has to be very careful with him. Like you said, he's delicate, you know, and mm-hmm. she's very powerful. Yeah. I, I feel like they did that a couple times in the movie, too. Like, or, or, like, there were scenes where, like, other characters underestimate her clearly the pimp at the beginning but then once you went deeper into it remember the scene where she's with the girl that's um a sex worker and they're in the like the room together and she thinks she has the upper hand the whole time she's like kind of talking down to her and then all of a sudden as the vampire's talking it's clear that this is not the case anymore and it's like that she has that much power that much intensity like she has agency yeah. it's just really to me yeah um it just didn't miss very if it did miss i don't remember any misses i don't remember misses yeah, no, 100%. Oh, I have the miss, actually. There was one thing that bothered me. Ooh. At the very end of the, the, there was a point when they were talking about the song Hello, and she called it Hello, Hello by Lionel Richie. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was talking about that song. I so was like, in my brain, like, I want that to be the song. Like, at the very end when he pulled out the cassette, oh. I was like, dude, if this is Lionel <laughs> Richie, hello, like, that would be a great, and it was something else, and I was like, oh, that was a moment. Uh, it would have been on the nose, don't get me wrong, but but at the same time for me, I was like, oh man, um, just because they had been talking about sharing that song, I was like, that's so, you know. Um, yeah. I think it could have worked either way. Uh, I, I don't think you're wrong, but what I do like is that they put it in there, like the hello, hello, and I instantly heard it in my head mm-hmm. as they were talking about it. Because, I mean, everybody knows that song, I would imagine. Yeah. So it was already sort of in my head without them having to do it. And then it's like, great, they saved that that last song for another cool song I had never heard of before. Yeah, yeah. No, but like, I like I wanted to go back to like the delicates, the delicacy of like their relationship because I thought it was very interesting that they made him look like James Dean when he's the most innocent character in this entire film. <laughs> like, I thought that was just like such a smart design choice for him. Yeah, you know, like keeping something so classically, like iconically bad boy, 
but he's like the kindest person, you know? Like, I mean, maybe not the kindest, but like, he's definitely the most, like, has like the most sense of naivete almost. Oh, yeah, you know? without a doubt, for sure. Um, you, you know so much about this character. It's such a, a, a lovely written script, even though there's not a ton of words in it. You know so much about this character right away. I mean, he tells you the exact days he had to work in order to uh, be able to buy that car. Like, yeah. you know it down. So, like, you know this guy's, like, checking his calendar. Like, he already did the math in his head, and he's like, this many days. And so then I did the math. Like, well, dang, how many years did it, it take him like to work? or something? Yeah. Well, yeah. To, to save up and buy this automobile that is, like, his dream car or whatever. So you already know this guy is, like, hardworking and at least ambitious enough to go after what he wants. But he has a lot of obstacles in his way. You know, he's poor. His dad is a junkie. And, you know, it's, like, death battle an addiction and he's trying to keep his family afloat and he's got a lot of stuff on the table just so like he can like you know he's got to do battle with drug dealers and you know the neighborhood and uh sex workers and you know all types of people are in his way he's got to sell drugs you know and you know he doesn't want to i don't even i think he he got the drugs from the drug dealer right like the drug dealer left them behind or something i don't mm -hmm. know well he found them after the guy was dead and he just took them to sell because he saw an opportunity there. Yeah. So, and then yeah. I think that's also part of the tension too, is like, you're just waiting for him to do the thing that she's going to kill him for, for a lot of the film, or at least I felt that way. Like I was waiting for him to like, fuck it up. Yep. <laughs> and I how agree. tragic would that have been? Ugh. Yeah, I didn't know where the thing was going. It was so different. I was like, wherever it goes, I I have to be okay with it because it's not my story anymore. You know what I mean? It's it's, it's on its own rail at this point. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. I was concerned that it was going to be that he was going to it was going to be like part of his personality, that she was going to be part of his. And thank God it didn't go that route. But and and maybe people see it that way. I don't know. But for me, there were definitely things like he was evolving a little bit, and she was evolving in a different way. Um, and to me, I was like, I wonder if they're coming on, like there was a scene where like he went and found the father and he like looked at the boy a certain way. And next thing you know, he's in a car driving away. And I was like, is he running away from having done something? And you know, there was a bunch of stuff like that, that I was like, but dude, how about the, the father? Do you guys, do you know who that is? Have you guys ever seen the show, How I Met Your Mother? Oh. I didn't really watch it. Is he okay, in that so there is a character, a recurring character that drives a taxi, and his name is Ranjit. And Ranjit oh. is just a, a, a character from Iran who's a, and he, pot, he comes in like randomly, like once every 10 episodes. And I was like, I know this guy from somewhere. I had to look it up by the end. And I was like, I can't believe it's that guy. Um, okay. you know, this ridiculous sitcom comedy guy. But um, he was amazing. He was really good too. I thought he was a great actor. I, I thought everybody in the movie, nobody bombed. Um, like nobody had a, they didn't have a weak character really. For me. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think yeah. so. I feel like you she would have edited them out. You know, I don't, I don't think they, you know, um, even that pimp guy, that dance scene at the beginning where he's trying to impress her and he's picking up like the five pound weights and he's doing the dance, like, you know, like there's so many things. He had that Ming mustache where, you know, um, yeah, I don't feel like this movie wasted a character or a moment or anything. It's just like it kind of streamlines what the point. It spends a little bit more time on the points it's trying to get across, but I don't feel like anything's wasted. It's very efficient. Mm -hmm. It's very efficient with the time that it has, and it's not a terribly long movie either. It's like, what, an hour, 29 minutes or something? Mm -hmm. I think it was an hour 40 at most, but I was surprised at how short it was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not long. It doesn't feel long, at least. Uh, what, what does it say here? Oh, an hour 40, yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't feel... It felt like an hour 20 to me. Um, there was something else that you said uh, about the character... Uh, oh, shoot, I forgot. Anyways, whatever. Well, like, even the extras in this were, like, really interesting, like, characters of their own, too. Like, like I feel like that's, like, part of it. It's just, like, why this film is so good is, like, the setting of Bad City itself is a character in a, in a way. Like, the yep. ditch. Like, we haven't even touched <laughs> the ditch yet. Like, do you think that all of just her victims? Or is that, like, what's going on? You know? Because, like, I thought that that was part of it, too. It's like, it was kind of its commentary on, like, what was happening at the time. Which, you said you the know, ditch? The ditch. Jumping the bodies, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. What ditch? 
Oh, it was like a. It was like one of the first things he walks by. Oh, and well, he, it, it was, it's more like an empty like canal than a ditch. And they would dump bodies in there as they killed them. Like that's where he dumped the pimp's body, and that's where she dumped the homeless guy's body. I don't remember whose body she dumped down there. Um. Oh, you talking about like that corridor? No, no, like um, like when in the beginning of the movie, like you see him walk by, and then you look into what's in the ditch, and there's like a pile of corpses everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I totally missed that. It was dark, oh, but I saw that thing like three times. They did. <laughs> I don't know how I that one got by me some kind of way. I don't know. Um, oh, you know what I was going to say is that when this movie stars and she has her first kill, you, you're not sure, like, did she kill this person, you know, like, to catch vengeance, or he just seems like the most obvious choice to kill? That's what I was thinking at first. Like, he's a bad guy. Like, no one's going to miss this this chump. So she's picking up her people. But then she started picking on the little boy. And now it's like, oh, maybe maybe she there is no good or bad. She's just a shade of gray. She's just going for whoever is the most vulnerable in that moment. You know what I mean? But then she, you know, she um, spares the little boy, maybe to teach him a lesson. So I'm like, oh, maybe she is good. Or maybe she's just seen so much she's trying to leave as much good in the world as she can. You know, and I guess that argument can be made about her victims. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, she Pretty much scared that kid straight. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it reminded me of that scene in, in Fight Club where uh, Brad Pitt grabs the guy out of the liquor store and he's like, he pulls out his wallet and grabs his license and he's like, if you're not on your way to be a veterinarian in six weeks, I'm going to kill you. And he takes his license and everything. It reminded me yeah. of that so much. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. It definitely had those kind of vibes for sure. Yeah. yeah, no, like the fact that she like offered the chains and the watches that she stole mm. to the to the sex worker, too. I love that. I also love that vampires love. They always seem to love trinkets and treasures and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, almost every vampire movie you see, they always have like some little trinkets and treasures from their travels around, little mementos. And I've always dug that, and I thought that that was very much the case here too. She was very happy to accept those things you know you mentioned before about the little boy and then and then also with uh the, the pimp at the beginning then then like the homeless guy he didn't really do anything right unless mm -hmm. i missed it and he did something earlier in the film no. well at that point in the movie the way that i took her killing the homeless guy i thought it was like kind of a what do you call it like when when like uh foreshadowing mm -hmm. of, of killing the father later where okay yeah, the homeless guy did nothing wrong, but she could tell, like, there's no way that you ended up like this and didn't try at least to get out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, this guy, can, this, um, I guess to use a derogatory term, this bum on the streets, like, no one's going to miss and probably figure, like, well, you must have done bad if you ended up here. Well, I thought it was an act of mercy because he was coughing. Really? Oh, okay. But you know, so like he was sick. So gotcha. it's like, how is he going to? See, I'm just sadistic and evil. <laughs> so. <laughs> not that. No, no, that's an interesting take. Okay. Well, also, so, can we talk about like our favorite characters? Yes, like I was about to get into that. Awesome. <laughs> who was, who was oh, before you? we get into that, I do have a question for you, Michaela. Uh, is this your first time seeing the film, and uh, or have you? And why did you choose it? Because I really wanted to watch something with a female director that and that kind of fit within the uh, criteria that we had. Um, and it's just been on my list for so long, so I thought it was just like the perfect opportunity. Okay. So. Yeah, that's why I picked it. So okay, anyway, so I'm watching the movie right now. I see the the dead bodies in the the uh, canal or whatever you want to call it, the ditch. Mm -hmm. Why is that like not a thing? Like no one cares that they're walking past corpses of like rotting bodies. Like I, what? I, I I could be wrong. I took that as a fantastical reason in the film. Like as soon as they said that the city was named Bad Town or Bad City, mm -hmm. like the way I saw it, I was like, okay, this is obviously like kind of like more of a fantasy type realm. Like it's not, it's it doesn't take place 
in our universe, this is some other world where mm. people can walk by that and they don't bat an eye because there's so many fucking dead bodies in there. You know, like, air, yeah, that's how bad that town is where there's no law or whatever. So it's like, well, that's... So they so probably no one even thought that, oh, maybe a vampire did half these things. Like, no, nah, it's a... It's a fucking terrible place to live. I didn't even think about that because, like, you do not see any like kind of pop in this film at all. You know, like, there's no hint at a police force whatsoever. True. No, I never thought about that either. I hadn't even considered it. So. Um, yeah, it kind of. It didn't go like full Sin City, but it, you know, um, it did have like I agree with you. It had like a fantastical element in the sense of you know, exaggerated, but again, not over the top. Um, so many things could have killed this for me or made it hokey. Um, when she attacks people like that was, didn't come off like uh, that is done bad a lot. Um, and it was not at all like the speed with which it happened and everything. Um, the skateboard scene where he's too messed up on ecstasy and she's pushing him and he's bouncing. Like that, that was like, that's the cutest thing on the planet. And there's like a vampire pushing a druggie down or, you know, a guy on drugs down the street. Like it was so cute. Um, for me, uh, <laughs> I feel like that's maybe the reason why she didn't kill him. Yeah, because she kind of had like a little bit of a, a smirk on her face when she was doing it. Mm -hmm. Like if he had to walk back to her place, her inviting him to her place kind of told me that he wasn't going to be murdered. I kind of I thought maybe for a second like he might end up like her Igor or something like. Vampires yeah. always like, yeah, Dracula's always have their Igor. That's what I thought. Like, oh, he's Dracula, but really he's Igor, you know? Mm -hmm. But when she started pushing with that skateboard, I'm like, oh, they're having fun. She's not going to murder him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that because like there were so many times where it was like, will she, won't she type thing. But like, I think after that encounter, the thing that I figured is whenever she doesn't have her burka or like her cloak. Cause that's kind of like a vampire, like cliche, you know, like uh, Lugosi with his, with his little uh, with thing, his cape. with his cape. And that's kind of how the burka looks as well. It's her, it's her shield and whatnot. Cause we see the only time where we see her like without it, it's I think with him and it happens twice in the movie. And it's when she's completely vulnerable, mm -hmm. like to this man. I think the only other time where it's like I felt like okay, this might happen is when he meets her a second time and has the hamburgers because she has the thing again, and you know she's rejecting his advances and tells him like, "No, I I've done bad shit." And he's like, "Oh no, <laughs> now it's gonna happen. If it doesn't happen now, it's not gonna happen." You know? Yeah. Because like I thought the same thing when she like actually put it on when he was there. The oh yeah. Because like she puts it on and then she looks at him and it's like, "Oh, is this?" Is this going to be the time? Mm -hmm. But but think of how smart that, like, reinvention is, too. You know? Like, like her just, like, scooting down the, like, road with it billowing behind her was just, like, <laughs> such a great moment, too. Oh, it's full-on badass superhero, just, you know, iconic. It's It's incredible. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did they have like an orchestral background sound soundtrack for that? Where it's like it it was basically Iranian Jaws for her. <laughs> it's like, oh no, here she comes killing again. <laughs> Cause the, 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 the I, I think I made this joke with Kayla's like it's like I bet like Tarantino saw this film and thought more more feet. Cause like the soundtrack to this movie, like some of it's very modern, but then other times it's like, like man, this feels like a 50s, 60s type like horror movie. Like not, not like 30s, because like that's its own thing where it's really old. But it was like it's a little bit more modern, just well, slightly. Well, it's just like I feel like that the way that they did use the orchestra like were very like Bella Lugosi moments, mm -hmm. which is what like this whole thing like just made me think of Frankenstein and Dracula. And like Jack Pierce and James Whale and all of those people, because like the way that, but that's what makes it so good is like you can just really see that this director really appreciates the art form and just managed to make it their own. And I don't think you see that a lot where someone takes like tropes that we all know so well 
and truly put it in their own personal lens, you know, in such a way that like speaks authentically. And this movie nailed it. I feel like the music is the giveaway for the, the Tarantino feel of this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I thought about that when I was watching it. I'm like, oh, is this like a, a Tarantino moment? Is this like what they're going for? Is that the influence? Like, what's happening here? And then it sort of hit me after I watched it. I was thinking, well, this thing's a Western, without a doubt. So with that kind of feel, the Western music overlay, I think it's just been so used by Tarantino in the modern day that if anybody uses it at this point, <laughs> it just feels like a Tarantino sound. Because yeah. he's used it so iconically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I just let feel me, like... Let me jump into my favorite character as well. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, it, was a, it was a glossy as a performance in the thing, for sure. But it's Dominic Reigns' portrayal of that mean street pimp drug dealer guy. I mean, he was having the most fun in this movie, I guarantee it. Like... <laughs> His haircut, that that cool tattoo on the side of his head, just just a mean, nasty guy. And I was like, man, this dude is really killing it right now. Like he really sells the movie up front for me. Cause I'm like, oh, this guy can act. And he's intimidating and he's scary and he's like herky jerky. You don't know what he's gonna pull, or what, what what he's how nasty this guy really is, how much of a baddie he really is, you know? Um and so like that really kind of like he's a great uh he's a great like antithesis to our hero like right off the bat even though he doesn't last very long but as i was looking him up just now i realized i met that dude before in detroit Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> small world holy I crap looked up his picture and then i started looking up his resume i'm like wait i met this guy so he's great dominic brain it's good to go for him yeah, he's he's yeah. what's his nationality any idea what his uh he's He's either Middle Eastern or Indian. I forget. I, I met him. He was shooting an Indian film when I was in Detroit. So I just assumed he was Indian when I met him, but maybe not. That's crazy. I, I'll i admit that I think costume and, and makeup helped a lot. Like that, 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 that the, the side tattoo, I don't even know what it says in that language, but it's pretty dope. I mean, I thought the sex scene was kind of cringe on his throat, but... <laughs> but I think that's like the point of the character, too, yeah. though. It's like, he tries so hard to be cool that he just, like, steps over the line, which is, like, why it's tacky. And but because, like, it's so close to being, like, I could see so many 13-year-old boys, like, daydreaming about doing that to yeah, their and, own head. And, and, and it's great, too. Like, Chris sure, she, she kills him. She murks him, like, in a moment of vulnerability because he's high as fuck but like it's great knowing that someone that dumb as soon like did not like <laughs> like they saw them he saw those fangs he might have thought that no that's the drugs but he saw those fangs oh he stole them and he liked them i think he thought they were fake like mm -hmm. like you know like she was on some punk rock shit you yeah. know like oh she sharpened her teeth he goes oh that's badass like i think that's what he thought probably um oh. God. Yeah, like once you start getting head tattoos on your face and stuff, that's like your that's your cue to society that I'm not a part of you guys. I'm not working for anybody. I'm not doing any like service. You know what I mean? Like I I am in this thing for me, and that's it. I I have disassociated myself from society in one way or another. That's the the psychological subconscious thought that I get when I see like big face and head tattoos. Mm hmm. Or like the make like if that was like makeup though like it looked so good like it did look like, uh, oh it's like, definitely makeup but that that's not yeah that, but it's great <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> that it like great choices like I mean whoever designed it did a fantastic job yeah exactly like it was smart placement it didn't look like makeup because like that's really hard to do with fake tattoos like there's like so many where you just look and you're just like yeah. <laughs> You tried. Yeah. Oh, does that say damage on your forehead? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Well, who was your favorite character? Oh, oddly enough, it would have to be um the vampire. Like, cause it's crazy. Cause like, I think um, I'm not gonna lie. All 
all the all the females in this movie, like even like the 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 rich bratty girl, mm -hmm. like, even though we only see her like for a little bit, is that, is that that's her at the party too, right? Mm -hmm. That she like I think all of them like they out act the shit out of every fucking guy in this movie. Even the dad, where I thought like okay, he like there's range there definitely, but I was like nah, like I don't know. I guess I was just kind of you know, the roles that they played. Like I thought their kind of nuances and like uh, uh like what do you call it? Like not sublayering subtext. I don't know what the fuck subtext. Yeah, subtext. Yeah, like it was really really great. But with her, it she was the most versatile, and I think her role kind of lended her a lot. Uh, it allowed her to do that because mm -hmm. I couldn't, I was so mad that I was like, wow, she is so pretty, adorable and great, but she's fucking menacing. <laughs> she's terrifying, especially with the, with that, that kid scene. I thought the kid was going to get, I thought he was going to, I thought he was going to get it. <laughs> I thought he was dead. Like I, I in my mind. That is an ex-child. Like it, yeah, it's an ex-child because <laughs> in my mind's eye, I figured that, by the time that she meets up with the sex workers, like, oh my gosh, like, that's how old she's been. Like, she she's seen these people in town, and she knows where they were from beginning to end. And whoever ends up like being the worst of the worst, she's gonna get. So she's warning this fucking kid is like, don't make me fucking catch you, cause I gotta listen. I'm checking you twice. <laughs> <laughs> like, god damn, like. A part of my inner Catholic was like, man, if I saw her, that'd be my, my, my vision of the Virgin Mary, like telling me not to go astray. I would call I would call the church, give me sainthood right now, because Mary's scary. <laughs> but my, it was so incredible that she could play a monster, but still root for her and like still like like you know, like like yeah. like I know that the the other like I, I talked about already, like like let the right one in, where it's like it's it's harder for her because it was a child actress mm -hmm. playing this vampire, but like with with that character was like oh, this isn't justified or whatever. I felt the complete opposite with this one. I was like it, it earned that for me. It's like oh, I I I believe she does not want to do these things, you know. But mm -hmm. like when she does. She's a fucking, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. So, Christy. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't even talk about her mirroring when she's mirroring the dad as they're going down the street. Yeah. And she's doing everything that he does, and like she does. I feel like she, you know, I would pick her also as my favorite. And now I don't want to. Um, um, With that's the dad. I thought that was just like some random, uh, like. Destitute guy. No, that oh. wasn't that the dad. No, no I think it was pops, but he was wearing a hat, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um, for uh, the other character for me is is the is the guy, the main guy, uh, Arash, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. And so for me, him, dude, think of the character that started off in the movie, who is like cowering to the pimp at the very be, you know, um, is like in that room with his dad and just has his head down, lets him take the car completely, and like how much that character evolved to the point when like. They're on the um, they're on the train. They're getting ready like next to a train, and she turns around to look back at him, and he never does. Like when they're gonna break up, then it's not gonna work out, and he doesn't turn around. And for me, I was like, wow, this person has changed so much from that beginning little cowering guy at the beginning of the movie. Um, and for me, that that was huge because we saw her vulnerability it, for the only time in the movie. That's when she was vulnerable. Um, and every other time her back was up and she, you know, no matter who she was with, there was a chance she was going to kill them. Uh, especially that scene with the sex worker where they're both in the room and, and you can see that the sex worker is like talking kind of down to her. And then all of a sudden, like that oh shit moment is completely in her eyes when she realizes like if this girl wants to take her out, she's done. Um, so for me, both of those things, those parallels of the two characters evolving in different ways and, and changing so much. Um, were, were the biggest parts, but I, I really like both of those. Uh, I mean, uh, clearly the main characters. Um, those yeah. were my two favorite. Yeah, Steve. Uh, I mean, I said at the beginning, I said it again, the cat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, he was well behaved. You guys Very well -behaved. are it. You guys are completely underestimating this cat. This cat actually is the reason they uh, were able to to put that sticker from Sundance is because of the cat. Uh, <laughs> that cat got two credits, 
two credit cat. Yeah, true. Uh, I'll admit that last scene with the cat, I couldn't tell if it was purely happenstance or whatever, but it felt like the cat was reading the room. Like the vibe of the of the car is like, so are are we gonna do this or not? <laughs> like, cause it looked like the cat was looking at both of them, like, cause it's a cat. Of course it's <laughs> I would I would think that a cat's not smart enough to to act with what it's being given. <laughs> But that's what it felt like. <laughs> how, how dare you, JP? <laughs> what was the other uh, movie that the cat was in? No, like it's it's just like the cat's name was listed twice in the credits. Oh, two credits. I got you. I thought you meant okay. Yeah. <laughs> like where, where it was, you know, because like in the beginning of like at the end of every credits, they have the top billing actors and then the whole um, ensemble that, yeah. that that the cat was with the, the top movie. players. <laughs> Is you know, it was yeah. great. And he was a chunky cat too. Yeah, he, he, was, was he was a pretty chunky cat. <laughs> oh, I don't know if anybody caught it at the very beginning. One of the executive producers was Elijah Wood. Yeah, oh, really? yeah. Oh, that was yeah. weird. <laughs> I saw his name <laughs> I rewound it. I was like, wait a minute, what is what? Um, so I don't know what his affiliation is. I, obviously, he's an executive producer, but um, I did catch that at the beginning too. I forgot to say that before. So I was reading an article, I didn't get all the way through it. Um, it's about the making of this film and the budget and you know uh it started off as an independent film where they used crowdfunding to get the initial sources they just didn't want to wait around to get the movie made so they just started with what they had and i believe i haven't gotten that far in the article but i believe people just start coming on later um and started you know helping out with this thing but yeah so this thing really just built from the ground up so i'm not sure exactly how mr uh woods got involved but yeah, I mean, Vice clearly came aboard, too. Well, and, like, I think the last thing I really wanted to talk about is uh, the director of this is a woman. And I feel like that really does change the way that, like, the perspective of the film is. Do you mm -hmm. think, like, that affects it at all? I'm going to say, mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say probably. Because uh, I'm sure if you gave this to, like, a guy, like... Uh, the male characters would be a bit more machismo mm -hmm. and whatnot, where, like, the... I think they would have made uh, the drug dealer a bit more threatening, but in this film, he came off a bit more realistic, like, ah, he's a fucking bully. Like, he thinks he's all that, but in all honesty, like, not really. Or at least not not, not, not much up against a monster. <laughs> yeah, no. well, it's and, like you know, it, it would have ended with um, a bit more, you know, I think it would be more intimate or a bit more sexualized i think i is think what that's I'm the word you're saying. looking for because it's very intimate it's, it's, yeah steve uh yeah i have to agree a little bit with what jp said like it definitely would have been a different perspective but for example if it was a guy that actually directed this there wouldn't be a cat there would be a dog oh <laughs> <laughs> that is a hot take isn't it no that's it's fun. just like because like you said something earlier that kind of just struck me it's like a lot of these characters do like a little bit of a like an act of rebellion in this and they're just like really small like with the sex worker keying the car you know um and they're just like really subtle that they wouldn't read that way i feel like that's, that's like such a like a woman's way of thinking you know because we're told so often that we have to be quiet and, and like there's also this fear of being caught that like I don't think a lot of men like experience when it comes to acting out in those ways. That just was re really present and suddenly in the movie that just blew me away. So that was just my two cents. Uh, Jason. Yeah, I think this movie can only be made by a woman, um, given its nature. Uh, there's something in the film. I mean. The movie has a, a strong nurturing element, not just from the vampire, but like as a whole. It feels like there's a lot of nurturing happening in this thing from the, you know, um, Ar Arash trying to nurture his father back to health. And, you know, the vampire sort of taking care of a lot of different people in this movie, you know, giving the, the, the trinkets and jewelry to the, you know, sex worker. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on. She's kind of helping the little boy. She's scaring him straight. You know what I mean? Like, Keep your act together and he'll never forget that for the rest of his life at some point he'll be thinking about that in his 40s like did that ever even happen but he'll always be watching his back you know what i mean um 
there there is a strong element of um I don't know how you guys feel about this or if you had any thoughts about it, but I was thinking like, is this thing making a statement uh, for or against Islam in any way because of like what she's wearing? Um, and I felt like, is this, cause I mean, I didn't know who made it or like what the intentions were. Are they mm -hmm. trying to say like, you know, maybe it's Islam is violent and they are vampires. Like, are they monsters? Are they, you know, are they like, you know, like splinter sales taking a town out little by little. Like I, I didn't, I wasn't sure if that was the. I, I didn't know because I don't know anything. I just came went into it blind. I don't feel that way by the end of it, but it's definitely there. Like I mean, I think it it touches like an aspect of everyone's lives in that area for sure. Kind of like how like evangelical, like specifically evangelical Christian stuff touches everything in America. You know. I don't think that she's saying it's neither evil nor not because like the evil lot like that that symbology is like throughout the entire movie like it's decorated on all the characters walls and stuff if yeah. anything i think it's kind of like more about the westernization of places like this are you saying yeah. like i brought my own stuff to it maybe i I, I just that's not an element I saw in it at all. Okay. But like I noticed something like more like the fact that like they did use a lot of American pop in the film. Um, the way that she's dressed is very Western. Yeah, you know, it felt very like, furniture. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so so I thought it was kind of more of a statement on how like that impacts things because that's how i took the the bodies in the canyon too it's like it was like a statement on the american war more of anything okay. yeah but, that makes sense but, like that's an interesting thing and i'm sure like that's probably something that i'd have to look into yeah i mean who knows what like if it's even a thing it just i don't know it just kind of came up to my attention like yeah. i said by the end i didn't feel it but yeah it it's there but also it kind of makes her look like a a badass superhero, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I think to so yeah. many people, it's a symbol of oppression, right? Like, yeah, that, that you know, mm -hmm. women are being forced to do that. Um, so for me, same. I agree. I think uh, I think it does say something about the character, and and she uses it in a way that's the exact opposite. I don't feel like any of the female characters showed a whole lot of vulnerability in any way compared to the male characters in this movie, except. Once she started to fall in love, then she started to open up that way. But um, I every week I put a name on there, on and my name is a character from the film and it's to remind me to talk about something. Do you guys know who Rockabilly is in the in the movie? Say that again. Rock. So Rockabilly is a character name. The only reason I knew this is I Googled it afterwards, and it's the character that I'm guessing is transgender with the balloon. Oh, um, so, yeah. So the thing to me is is like to have an Iranian film, think about how unaccepted that is in Iran. Like right. that is such a big deal that you would have a character that would be like that character would never, you know what I mean? Would be so oppressed there. And yeah. it's so free in the movie. Uh, I thought that was really important too. Like, you know, I don't even know if that character had any lines. No. I'm but, not sure if the character had any lines either, but yeah, it, it felt very provocative. You know, plus this movie came out like what in 2014, something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it felt pretty like a provocative choice for sure. And I was like, yeah, I, I like I, I see what you guys are going right away. Just set the tone. Yeah, I didn't even consider. Oh wow, <laughs> see, but like that's like what's so exciting about like a film like this is I feel like this is a film that you can watch over and over again and get new insights. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of like what makes it a classic. You know, that's what C.S. Lewis considered, or like he has like a, a statement saying that like, if there is a piece of art out there that every time you like approach it, you learn something new from it, it's it should be considered a classic, you know? Yeah, I agree. This, and I feel like you could do that with this film. This is definitely something I'm going to watch again multiple times, I feel like. I de definitely these ones, and the soundtrack is definitely logged in for me now. Like I'm going to be listening to the music from this for a little while. Um, yeah, and then do you, like so the oil field thing at first before I real I didn't realize it was an Iranian film in I like set there. I thought it was 
<laughs> right away, I used that American privilege to go like, it's a Western. Um, but because um, I was like, is this in Texas or in Mexico, like right on that border? And then I started to realize what was going on. Um, so for me, like just getting myself into the world of the movie took a little couple minutes. But once I did, I, I there just every time something would happen, I would go, man, this landed, this landed. They just keep landing these scenes where I'm like, I was not expecting that at all. But they just spun it a different way. Um, and for me, you know, just the development of all the all the different characters in that way. But that, that, that one character, Rockabilly, I don't know, have any clue what the derivation of that name is to the movie or why they chose that name. But when I looked it up, uh, I think it is someone who's been the, the, the actor is someone who has been in some other films. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So I, I guess that's like we've said a lot and I think there, that we could easily keep going with a film like this. Do you, do you have a bet? <laughs> do I have a do I have a what? You like to <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit the movie. I mean, it was alright. It was alright. It was alright. Right. Right. That right. is like that is the best recommendation I've heard from him so far. Could I go? Could I go to God with a little bit more child murder? Sure. <laughs> oh, you want to hear, folks? <laughs> the JP still of approval. All right. Well, I guess then it's time to go into final thoughts. Who wants to start off? I'll go. Uh, right. Final thoughts. I'll keep it short and super sweet. Um, I love this movie. Thought it was fantastic. It will be part of my viewing uh, life. I'm going to share this movie with other people. Um, I'm going to share this people movie with people who love vampire movies, horror movie, monster movies, things that are li like a little offbeat, off kilter. Uh, I'm probably going to make my next girlfriend watch this with me. So <laughs> once she hears this, I mean, you know, if you're out there. You're going to have to watch this movie with me one day. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, to me, this movie is like really aspirational. It's, it's the kind of cinema that I want to make. I think there's a lot going on. There's a lot to think about. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot that can be taken away from it. Uh, that the movie kind of follows some of my criteria for movies I really love. It doesn't tell you how to feel. You figure it out for yourself. Um, it's definitely not Hollywood, but it's really high level production. Uh, highly recommend. Uh, I would recommend this to all adults, um, whether whether they would like it or not. I would tell them to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I feel like if someone told me that they didn't enjoy watching this film, it would kind of hurt a part of my soul. <laughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry. I know. I didn't I mean know. to hurt you. I know. I know you didn't. <laughs> but like, it's just this is the kind of movie that makes me excited about movies like this is like this kind of part that like makes you fall in love with it as a craft because that's how this movie feels it was crafted yeah and, like i can't wait to dip in it again and watch it again very thoughtful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh i think or, Tess was gonna steve, say something steve? uh final thought uh uh first of all quick side note uh wouldn't it be cool if like actually uh there's uh, jason future girlfriend out there and then she like sees him from like here at the cinema club and then you go like yo how you met him i just did into his dms because i was watching the cinema club and i followed him and that's how it happened and now we're together that would be dope right for the cinema oh, club. that's uh, the story to tell our grandkids right how i, I mean reverse <laughs> this movie's great this is one of those movies that you can play in a, like a big projector or just have it in the background and it looks really cool uh definitely yeah. something that i would definitely do uh and it's it's a film that it's it's really great like honestly like if you if you like cinematography if you like really cool colors if you like amazing cats that can actually act like you know that like basically like you know all these amazing actors just went into this soul of a cat and really this cat went method acting and you want to see really great cat acting you got to see this movie because it's absolutely uh in incredible and uh, that's got some shots 
Yeah, he got he got amazing chops. Like I'm telling you, this cat. If if there wasn't like such a discriminatory discriminatory thing with the academy that they don't allow cats to be nominated, like this cat would have like won in every single award that year. But unfortunately, we still live in a society where we don't accept cats as legit actors. <laughs> We could, I think we could blame James Corden for that one. So, <laughs> damn. Um, so yeah, great movie. Two thumbs up. I will recommend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I really, I did, I did dig this movie. Uh, there was one part that I wanted to talk about, but we're already kind of at that time where uh, a lot of times where I watch films, like I watch it with you, and I'll. If I really am into it, I'll start like doing that annoying thing. It's like, oh, I bet this is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I bet this mm -hmm. is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And the ending, I'll admit, it surprised me. And it, I, I really enjoy a film. So far, a lot of the movies I liked, where the surprise, where the ending catches me off guard. Like, no matter if I kind of feel like lukewarm about it in like the in the first two acts, if it ends where it's like, whoa, what? I didn't, I didn't see that. Like. I dig it, and this film happens to be one of them where I thought the film was gonna go in totally one direction where it doesn't. And I'm sure, like, again, I'm pretty sure if a dude wrote it, it would have ended exactly the way that I said that mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, like, all in all, it's a very beautiful film. It's a great modern, like, black and white where, they, where the black and white is not a fucking filter. I, I've seen those movies where, okay, it's black and white for what, you mm -hmm. know? But where this one, like, it utilizes that really well. Yes, it does. Cat acting. Cat acting is great. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, uh, A plus, A plus. It's an A plus movie. One of the very few horror movies where I'm willing to revisit. And it has, it has the privilege of being a, a good short watch. Mm -hmm. Where, like, a long movie where it's like, you need to cut some shit out. Or in this one, no, everything that's in it, even like the very small mute details, like it's there for a reason and it helps the story along. So yeah, it, it plus movie. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Yeah, I feel like I would uh I would judge someone if they didn't like this movie. I'd be like, what well, could you not like about it? <laughs> because, and the reason is because they must be a pretty judgmental person. There's so many things you could be prejudiced about in this movie. Uh, sadly, like there's too many people that would not give this movie at their all. And like, sadly, I, I, you know, I think it would have gotten more praise. I, I don't know how the reception was beyond Sundance, but for me, I wish more people would see this movie. And there's so many ways that break down like gender barriers and things like that. Um, I would definitely recommend it to adults for trying cinema they haven't tried before where, you know, it's not just a leading man. I, I think this movie would have been terrible if the lead character was a man. Um, I think it would have lost all its validity. Uh, and I think that the, the black and white, the, just as JP said, I think that was huge. Like definitely made a big difference on the tone of the movie, the intensity of the movie, and then really leaning into, um, what he said before about little things. They didn't have to explain everything. Like the, the, the tunnel scene that we were talking about before, where they just keep showing, um, Arash down, I, I guess it was Arash down, down that tunnel. Like you don't really have to explain why you saw that. You can have feelings about something like that, but they didn't have to explain it to you at all. Um, and then she would just wake up at that moment. Again, I was really worried that it was going to lean into that and be like, oh, it's another side of his personality. And I was like, that's been done before. And I think it just ended or, you know, had a much better twist. You know, the love story really kind of took over at the end of the movie for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's everyone's opinion. Jason, did you have a question? For Steve? I did, actually. Thanks for asking, Michaela. Um, Steve, <laughs> what do you got for us next week? <laughs> next week, I, I don't know why you asked me, Jason. Uh, and I'm glad you got your phrase back because someone took your line last time. Um, <laughs> it's JP's turn. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here's JP. Ah, he's about to throw in some fucking rocks into the Cinema Club Blender again. Oh, crap. Here it comes. Well, our next film, you better forget about your laundry. Forget about your job. You better crank up the volume and yank out the knob because our next film next week has it all. It's UHF. <laughs> <laughs>
We're watching Weird Al Yankovic's UHF. <laughs> All right. It's been a long time since I've seen this one. It'll be like a new film, probably. Me too. Ooh. I should have known. I should have never seen any in my life. <laughs> so, for Jason Eccles, Rockability, aka Chris, Michaela and JP, and me, Steve the CB, we'll catch you next week. Bye bye.